Hello everybody, we are going to be doing the physical and chemical changes lab. In class, this is a full two day lab. So this particular lab video will be a little bit lengthier than normal. So we're gonna start with part A, looking at the physical properties of matter. So the first step is to examine some substances. So you have a data table uh, for part A. So we're gonna be looking at the physical state, the color, and the odor. Um, obviously we can't do the odor at this moment, but we'll get to that. So this first item, this is magnesium. Notice that it is in the solid state, okay? And it is kind of a grayish color. All right, this is silicon dioxide, also known as sand. So you can see that it's a white powder. It's got some gray flecks in it. It's also got some shimmery quality to it. So it's almost reflective. All right, this next one is uh, C2H22O11. This is sucrose, also known as table sugar. Okay, you can actually see it start to clump there. Okay, it does actually um, combine with a little bit of water to do that clumping but it's mainly um, uh, white crystalline in structure. Also has a little bit of shimmer to it. This is iron. Okay, notice it's got kind of a dark brown color to it. So this is elemental iron. This is sodium chloride, also known as table salt. Okay, you can see it's crystalline in structure. It's almost like a bunch of little tiny rocks in there. It's white, it's also solid. Okay, here is elemental sulfur. So notice that it is yellow. It's also a solid, but it's got more of a powdery texture to it. Okay, and then this is sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda. It is also solid. Okay, it's actually, there we go, uh, kind of powdery in nature. It's stuck to the sides of the Petri dish there for a second. So very uh, powdery, kind of a, a nice dull white color. All right, so the next step, again, without opening these Petri dishes, is to look at what a magnet does. So does a magnet attract or repel any of the pieces of magnesium? Okay, and that's a no. Does it attract or repel silicon dioxide? Let's see. Actually, it looks like it's repelling it just a little bit. Surprisingly, a small effect. Make sure that that's not just the tilt. Okay, no, that was just the tilt of the Petri dish, so no effect on that. So sugar, we're not seeing any movement with the magnet. We're looking for a left to right-ish movement. Not seeing anything there. So for iron, oh, yep, you can see the iron. Let's move it all over there. Now watch the iron very carefully as I move the magnet it starts to want to come with it. You can see it actually moving with the magnet. So iron is affected by the magnet. If I flip the magnet, it's gonna go the other way. So yes, iron is moving with the magnet. Okay, sodium chloride. Okay, not seeing anything, no movement. Sulfur, not seeing anything, no movement there. And the baking soda, no movement there. Okay, so the only one that actually did have a reaction to the magnet was the iron. Okay, so that was procedure A, parts steps one and steps two. Step three, we're actually going to now kind of test the odor 
and whether or not it dissolves in water. So I'm gonna move these Petri dishes out of the way. And I have test tubes. I have pre-filled the test tubes. I'm gonna keep them in order so that I know which ones I'm looking at. So I have pre-added the substances to the test tubes about a small pea size. So since you can't smell in video, I will waft and let you know if there's an odor. So magnesium has no odor, odor, excuse me. This one is sodium bicarbonate, no odor. Sand, no odor. Next we have sugar, no odor. We have iron, no odor. Sulfur, this has a small odor like an eggy odor, like eggs. And then lastly, sodium chloride, no odor. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to add some water. So it's not really important how much water we add, just that we keep it consistent. So I'm gonna add some water to magnesium. Okay, and we are looking for the magnesium to dissolve. Okay, we were go we're gonna go ahead and add water to everybody. That way we give them time to dissolve if they're going to. It's gonna eyeball about the same amount. All right, so now let's go back and take a look. The magnesium has not dissolved. It has the same amount in the test tube as it did before. Okay, our baking soda, baking soda has, uh, a lot of it has already dissolved. There's that last little bit as I shake it there. So the baking soda is dissolving in the water, so it is soluble. Mark that as a yes. Okay, next we have the sand, silicone dioxide. That is not dissolving, so that's a no, which makes sense because sand's on a beach and beaches are exposed to water. Now we have sugar. Okay, the sugar you can actually kind of see these threads that look like it's thicker, thicker water, okay? And as I shake it and stir it, more is dissolving. There's less and less of the solid sitting at the bottom. So sugar does dissolve in water, which again makes sense. We add sugar to our coffee and tea and we expect it to sweeten the whole thing. So there you can see the sugar did dissolve. Okay, iron. Okay, so you can see that it's kind of discolored up here, but it's really just hanging out down here. So the density is causing some of the particles to float and discolor the liquid, but really it's not dissolving. You can really see this thicker band down here where it's all settling at the bottom. And if we allow it time to continue to settle, this upper part will be clear and colorless and you'll see the iron down there at the bottom. Okay, then we have our sulfur. Now notice the sulfur is floating up there at the top. So the sulfur is less dense than the water and you can see it clumping as I start to try and mix it and then it's kind of floating back up to the top. Definitely not soluble, not mixing, not dissolving. And then we have salt. This is NaCl, table salt. 
And let's take a look. You can, again, you can kind of see these lines as it mixes. That is the solid dissolving. They look like little threads in the water. And you can see the amount of salt is declining. The amount of solid sitting there at the bottom is decreasing. Okay, almost, yep, almost completely dissolved. So salt does dissolve in water, which again makes sense because there's salt in the ocean and the ocean is made up predominantly of water. So that is your answer to your odor and your solubility. Um, that is the end of part A. So your data table for part A should be completely done. I'm gonna move this over. Okay, and now we're going to do part B, step four, where we're gonna look at an iron and sulfur mixture. And we're also gonna look at step five, which is a mixture of salt and sand. So I have two Petri dishes, one with uh, sulfur and iron, and one with uh, sand and salt. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna test the effect of the magnet. So let's start with the sulfur and iron. So you can see the iron, it's the brown, and you can see the little bubbles of sulfur in there. And when we test this with the iron, we start to pull the iron away from the sulfur. Let's get it all on one side. And we're gonna to start to pull the iron away from the sulfur. And if we do this long enough, we can separate the iron from the sulfur using the magnet. Now, the sodium chloride and salt mixture. Yep. That was me catching the tape. Okay, nothing, there's no movement. We cannot separate salt from sand using a magnet. Which again, that makes sense because when we tested the salt individually and the sand individually with the magnet, neither one of them responded to the magnet, only the iron did in our original test from part A. So um, that will conclude uh, this particular portion um, and I'm going to get set up for uh, some of the other procedures. So we'll take a quick short break and then I will set up for some of the remaining tests in this particular lab. All right, everyone, we are going to continue our work on the chemical and physical changes lab. We are going to be working on steps six and seven and eight in part B. So let's start with step six. I have our salt sand mixture, about two scoops. I'm going to add approximately, because uh, this is a beaker, it's not gonna be perfect, approximately 30 mils of water. Okay, swirling it to mix. Okay, we already know that the salt sand mixture cannot be separated using a magnet. So let's see if we can use filtration. This works very much like uh, straining your uh, pasta with a colander. So I have a piece of filter paper. I fold it in half one way, like a semicircle, and then I fold it in half the other way to make kind of a pizza slice. Then looking at the edge, I find the bottom two, put my finger in between them, and open it up into a snow cone cup. I'm going to place this into a funnel. Place the funnel over a second beaker, and we're gonna pour our salt sand mixture through the filter paper. So I got a little bit less, so I wanna get all of that out of there. Okay and it's going to filter through 
as you can see what's coming through the bottom is very very clear and what's up there at the top is kind of a, a dirty brownish color so that's going to take just a little bit of time to filter so while that is filtering i'm going to set that to the side and we're going to do uh, part of step seven. So I have already cut two strips of magnesium. We are going to leave one unburnt and then we're gonna burn the other one. And then we're actually going to see if we still have the same substance after we combust or burn these substances, sorry, they weren't in the screen there. Now they are. So magnesium, shiny strips of metal, okay? So this one we're gonna leave unburnt. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that one into a test tube for part eight. Set that aside. Now this one, we're actually going to burn, okay? So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to have my burner here. Okay, this is called a meeker burner. All right, I am going to go ahead and light it. All right, so we have our burner lit. Now we're going to light or ignite the magnesium. I'm going to hold it with a pair of tongs. You're not gonna hold it with your fingers because it's fire, it's hot, okay. The key to this is please do not look directly at the screen while this is going on. You need to kind of look like, use your peripheral vision to see what's going on. So I'm going to take the magnesium, ignite it in the flame, and then I'm gonna set it down. can see that the tip burnt it didn't all burn okay let's see if we can get a little bit more to burn here I'm gonna hold on to the watch glass try and get a little bit of more of that to burn get all those pieces off okay go ahead and try and light a little bit of the back There we go. All right, so what you can now see, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my burner. We don't need this now. And as you can see, you have a, instead of a silvery substance, you have this white chalky looking substance. Okay, so the appearance is very, very different. Okay, now we're going to take this and we're going to put it into a second test tube, which will be part eight. Before I move to part eight, we need to check our filtration. So going back to step six, looking at our filtration, you can see all the sand is caught by the filter paper. Okay, so that implies that we have salt here in our solution down here, our, our liquid portion. But we're gonna make sure and double check that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pour about 10 mils, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, into an evaporating dish. I'm gonna place that evaporating dish on a hot plate, and I'm gonna turn the hot plate on at about medium setting. And we're going to evaporate all of the water to see if there's anything that remains that maybe didn't get evaporated. Okay, so we're gonna let that work for a minute. All right. Moving on. So step eight, 
I already had that original piece of magnesium. Now I'm going to put the combustion product into our second test tube. I'm gonna use a little scupula to do that. Just get a good amount, a couple of these pieces. All right, now we're going to see if these two substances, original magnesium and the, this is actually a synthesis product, the magnesium combined with oxygen in the air to make magnesium oxide. We have a small unburnt, or unburnt piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. We don't wanna skew our results. We had an unburnt piece of magnesium and we want all combustion product. All right, so the way we're going to test to see if these two really are two different compounds or if they're the same compound is, we're gonna see if they react with hydrochloric acid. So I have some hydrochloric acid. Again, we're not really looking for numerical values. We're just looking for yes or no, did it react, did it not react? So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some hydrochloric acid to the combustion product. You can see a lit, some fizzing, just a little bit. Not overly exciting. Okay, really, you just see it kind of powdery there. Really, after that initial fizz, nothing. So really, right after that initial contact fizz, there's really nothing going on, okay? So now let's add it to our magnesium strip. Okay, so you can already see a much more impressive reaction. Lots of fizzing, lots of bubbling. Okay, still going on, still going on. This one not doing anything, this one's still bubbling and fizzing. So you can see that magnesium reacts very vigorously with hydrochloric acid. However, the, the magnesium oxide really doesn't. Just that initial first fizz, and that's all we got, really. All right, so that was steps seven and eight. Let's check back with step number six. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up just a little bit higher. Okay, you can still see that this reaction's still going on. Okay, eventually it will stop because we will use up our limiting reactant. All right, so while we're waiting on the step six to finish, I'm going to move this out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and move on to step number nine. We'll need our burner again. So in step number nine, we're gonna take a little bit of sugar. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, so I've got some sugar in a test tube. Looks like sugar should look. I'm gonna go ahead and light the burner. OK, 
Okay, using my test tube holder, I'm going to gently heat the sugar. Okay, you can see it starting to melt. Okay, you can see it starting to liquefy. There's a very caramelly smell. Okay, I'm going a little bit higher, get a little bit more gentle. Okay. And then if I vigorously heat it, get it down there in that inner cone. Okay, you can see it really starting to turn black. It's actually giving off some um, fumes there, unpleasant fumes. And you can see that it's turning a serious black color. So gentle heating and we get a beautiful caramel. Okay, and when we heat it vigorously, we actually end up getting carbon. This is actually going to burn off all the components and we're actually going to get some black carbon in there. So a gentle heating, very different than a, uh, a gentle heating, you're going to melt the sugar, okay? And melted sugar a lot of times turns into caramel. Um, and then if you do a vigorous heating, you're actually going to get this black cakey substance. You can see on the inside there, that is, is uh, elemental carbon, okay? And turn off the burner. Very, very caramel smell. Okay, our evaporating dish from step six is still cooking a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the last step, which is uh, baking soda. So I've got another test tube. I'm gonna take some baking soda, put a little bit in the test tube. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Do a little bit more. As this sugar, this uh, baked sugar is sitting, uh, the smell is actually uh, becoming more unpleasant. All right. We're gonna react this with some hydrochloric acid. So I'm gonna hold this using my test tube holder. And I'm going to add my hydrochloric acid. Lots of fizzing. Nice, vigorous reaction going on. And the bottom is really cold. So the bottom of this test tube is very, very cold. That indicates that this had to absorb heat from the test tube glass and even my hands when I'm touching it so that this fizzy reaction can take place. So this is what we call an endothermic reaction. It took in heat to take place. All right, so that is everything except for the results of step six. So let's take a look and it is still kind of cooking. So I'm going to allow that to um, be on the hot plate for a little bit longer. And when it is done, we will check back in and see the results of step six. All right, guys, so I wanted you to get a really good look at uh, the, 
result of the evaporation. Now evaporation is a not a chemical change, it is a physical change. All we did was boil off the water and you can see how much salt was actually left after we boiled off all of the water. I also wanted to let you see what ended up happening a little bit better to the sugar that was vigorously heated. So at the top of the outer cone, that was our gentle heating, making that nice caramel color. Now we've got this blackness, okay? And you can really see inside there that um, almost spongy look. It's, it's really almost like a rock in there. In fact, this test tube is now just destroyed. Um, because we'll never get that out of there. And that made actual charcoal from carbon, elemental carbon. So I wanted to give you that look as well. So those are the results of all of the tests for the two-day physical and chemical changes lab.